Okay, so this part of the lesson is going to be a very conceptual part of the lesson. We're going to talk about how to make equations of planes and ultimately how planes are formed to begin with. And so we know a plane is an infinite flat surface and such an infinite straight line joint any two points and it will lie entirely on it. And it goes on forever and ever like lines do. And a plane can be described by giving any three non-collinear points. So Assuming we have three points here, so I'm going to take a point, a point, and a point. And if I select them all, oh, let's go back to blue. If I select them all, this one, this one, oh, hold on. Okay, so if I select them, this one, this one, and this one, and I like the blue one, I can now take that object and I can make a plane. And you can see that that goes to those three points. If I take one of these points and move it, it changes the plane I have. So three non-clinear points define a plane. So that's one thing that we can see. The another way a plane can be described is a point and two non-parallel vectors or lines. Well, to demonstrate that one, I need to have two non-parallel vectors. So if I'm going to make a vector here, and I will make my vector object make a vector, and I'll come over here and make another vector. And so I make a vector and I can change the vectors if I want but definitely these vectors are non-parallel if I pick a point anywhere I'd like and if I pick the point and the two vectors I can then also create a plane and so for sure it goes through that point oh, that it's just selected the point. Let me try a different. Uh, for sure, it goes through that point there, you can see. But it's also, as vectors can move around, these vectors, you'll notice, are parallel to this plane. And they actually, I always think of them as actually, I move them in such a way so they're actually on the plane. But that's, if I have two non parallel vectors, then they will form along with a point they will form a plane and the point all the point does is locate that plane all these vectors will be parallel to each other but the point just says which parallel one it is okay that's the second scenario as i'm going through this you should pause and make a note to yourself or maybe a little diagram to see what's going on okay so now a vector perpendicular to the plane at a given distance from the origin so to look at this one, I'm going to make a vector starting at the origin. I want a specific point, the origin, and then some other point, not the origin. And I'm going to make this vector here. Uh, I'm going to make a, create a vector. And now I want to select this vector and this point, and I can make from there a plane. Oh, a plane from the vector. And what you can see is that this distance away from it defines the, the vector, and I can have lots of different kinds of planes, and they will all be perp this vector is perpendicular to it always and I can see that it makes a plane so it represents the distance away from the plane and it's normal mean perpendicular and it creates a plane with normal and the distance away from the origin and finally the last scenario a vector perpendicular a vector perpendicular to the plane and a point that lies in the plane so considering that let's so 
I'm going to make a vector first of all, some vector. We'll make my vector, create my vector. And then I'm also going to go and create some point. Oh. And so now if I select the vector and the point, I'm going to create the plane from the vector. And you'll see that this is perpendicular. Even if I try and stretch this vector down, if I can, uh, this is a better way of seeing it. You can see now that it is perpendicular to the plane going through this point. So conceptually, these are the three ways that a plane can be described. And visually you should see, should think about what's going on because planes and vectors and lines are very visual. That's the end of the concept of 